Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how to select mixing valves and how to use them in Revit. So first we're going to select the mixing valve. I'm going to give you some basics on it. Then we're going to go into mixing valve functioning. So I'm going to take you through a mixing valve system schematic, you know, a flow diagram, so you understand exactly what's happening there. Then we're going to talk about mixed water proportions. So how much hot water and how much cold water you need to get that nice mixed water. And then we're going to use that information, that knowledge, to input it as parameters into a Revit family. So that whenever you connect your temper water pipe to the outlet, Revit will automatically know how much hot water and how much cold water that family needs as an input. See you in a little bit. Hi everyone, this is Alex with BIM It Up where we help you with professional training and coaching in mechanical, electrical, plumbing, fire protection systems, and Autodesk platforms like Revit and AutoCAD MEP. Let's get started. All right, so I'm doing a search online for a mixing valve, and I landed on this Nucleus Electronic Mixing Valve, Megatron NV200LF. It seems pretty close to what I'm looking for because I'm looking for a high capacity domestic water mixing valve with an electronic display. So, and, in, and I want a rack system, you know, I want it included with my recirculating pump. So let's go ahead and take a look at the brochure. Make sure that we're selecting the right thing. So we see a nice display here with a set point and the current temperature and a couple more sensors. That's good. Here's our rack system with a recirculating pump. Our recirculating loop will be here. We'll have our hot water inlet, our cold water inlet, and our temper water outlet. So that's pretty good. We're gonna go with something like this, you know, because I need some redundancy. So it's gonna be two in parallel. And then we wanna make sure that when we go to our flow and capacities, we select the correct valve that's going to give us within the flow rate that we're looking for a pressure drop that is acceptable for our design standards so I don't want to go too low with the pressure drop I want to remain within the 10 psi range 10 15 not too much uh, and I have a flow demand of about 200 gpm so let's take a look uh, so if I want to remain with it, see this is the pressure drop in PSI, so I need to go to 200 GPM, so see this one here, at 160 GPM has a pressure drop of 5 PSI, and at 230 GPM has a pressure drop of 10 PSI. So this seems to be my guy, that's pretty good, and then for the minimum flow activation is 0.25 GPM, so that's fantastic. So let's go with this valve. NV200LF 2PS. So let's go ahead and download the data sheet. So middle data sheet. Let's take a look. So that's for the single station, but the idea is going to be always the same. So we just want to make sure that we understand the flow diagram here. So from your water heaters, you're going to have your high temperature hot water at 140 degrees Fahrenheit going to your high temperature fixtures right if applicable if you don't have like a dishwasher or a special cloth washer that requires high temperature then you would not have this loop but in case you do then you have your high temperature hot water loop is being recirculated by this recirculator you know circulating pump on the other hand you have this T right coming out of your 140 degree loop and it goes through your heat trap into the mixing valve and then you have fresh cold water going into the mixing valve and then the outlet at a mixed temperature of typically around 120 degrees Fahrenheit it goes out to the building and it goes to the temperate water fixtures or the 120 degree fixtures and then it goes back to your system to your through your recirculating pump right here where it gets mixed with a return of the 140 degree water and it goes back into the water heater feed water so that's the basic concept, we're fine, we're understanding the situation. Now think about it, it makes sense. If you like this kind of content, you can subscribe to the channel. If you click that bell, you get notifications and then you don't miss any of our new videos. And if you're serious about your professional training, go ahead and visit us at bimitup.com and there you can contact me directly for some professional training. 
So this one shows redundancy. You know, you have two pumps for the same recirculation loop, and this one has two pumps, one for high temperature and one for low temperature. So when I opened this family, it didn't have the recirculating pumps incorporated, but that's not too important for what I want to show you. So what I want to show you is I want the hot water demand from my building to be translated through my mixing valve to my hot water inlet and my cold water inlet. So how do we do that? First, we need to remember that whenever we have a mixing valve, if you apply the first law of thermodynamics and simplify a little bit, you end up with this equation, which tells you that the fraction of hot water is going to be the temperature of the mixed water minus the temperature of the cold water divided by the different in temperatures between the hot and cold water. So in my case, I want the outlet hot water to be at 120 degrees Fahrenheit and I have my incoming cold water at 60 Fahrenheit and then I have my incoming high temperature hot water at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So this ratio comes up at 0.75 or 75%. If you have a lower temperature cold water, let's say you're in Rhode Island, you would use maybe 40 degrees Fahrenheit instead of 60, right? And if your water heater is providing you with 160 degrees Fahrenheit, then that's the temperature you will use here. And then obviously the remainder of this is going to be the fraction of cold water entering the valve, which is going to be 25%. So if you add them together, you get 100%. So we're going to have, of the 100% hot water that is being distributed to the building out of this pipe, 75% of that is going to be high temperature hot water coming in here, and then 25% is going to be cold water coming in at 60 degrees Fahrenheit. So let's bring in some nice AJS shared parameters. So we come here to new parameter, share parameter, and select it. We want to select it from my plumbing AJS parameters. So let's bring in this guy first. It's going to be fixture unit. I want to group it under plumbing. And for this case, I can keep it as a type parameter. I only have one valve anyway. So now let's bring in another parameter. That one's going to be the water at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm also going to group it under plumbing. I'm going to click OK. And lastly, I'm going to bring in the cold water. Under plumbing. Okay. And now I need to define some kind of relationship, right? Based on what we just saw. So I would say that the 140 degree water here is going to be, I'm going to grab this text. So I can come here and define a little formula here that is going to be equal to 0 0.75 times my mixed water and then as far as the cold water fraction is going to be 0 0.25 times my mixed water so now let's see if this is working let's say my mixed water was um, 100 GPM Right, so you get automatically for hot water 75 GPM and for cold water 25 GPM. So this is working fine. So that's our step number one. Now we need to assign the connectors in the correct way. So this is a little tricky and I got this from a guy named Fabio from Brazil. So thank you Fabio. So first Let's set this up. Instead of hydronic supply, I want to set it up to domestic hot water. And then as far as flow configuration, I'm going to set it up as fixture units first. The flow direction is going to be out. And uh, the last method, I can keep it as not defined. Now let's go ahead. This one here is domestic cold water, not defined. Flow direction is in. And the flow configuration I'm going to place it as fixture units. I'm going to do the same with the hot water. Domestic hot water, not defined, flow direction in, and the flow configuration is fixture unit. And then now, since they're all fixture units, I can assign the parameter that I just brought in. So 
for this guy the fixture unit instead of being whatever you want to put here manually you associate it to the hot water fixture unit parameter then you do the same thing with the cold water the fixture unit you associate with the cold water fixture unit parameter and then the outlet you are going to associate it to the mixed water fixture unit parameter right so now just to make sure that everything's working fine let's go ahead and change that parameter of mixed water fixture units instead of a hundred let's put it as 200 right and then this is working fine 150 this is working fine 50 and now if you come here you have 150 reading and here you have 50 reading right but what you really want is for this to read out of your system for that you would click here and instead of being fixture units now you can change this to calculate it and it's supposed to be reading out of your system so let's test that out so now I just open up a new project and I'm gonna drop it in here it's gonna be place and work plane let's go ahead our 3d view Let's set this to fine let's actually set this to shaded which I like better and now let's give it a shot so let's come out of here I have this in the correct in the correct pipe type let's take it let's say to 10 feet of elevation let's turn this way now let's go ahead and take this one out I'm gonna bring it down to let's say minus one foot we can change that later just want to have something here this system's not going to be domestic hot water it's actually going to be domestic hot water 140 degrees right and actually this one let's change from the generic out of the box domestic hot water let's change it to my water domestic hot water at 120 degrees and then for this one let's also take it down to minus one foot turn it this way by default it's domestic cold water so let's place it in my domestic cold water so I'm dropping an AJS pipe connector vertical um, let's give a diameter of four inches I'm going to place it right here I'm going to turn it 90 degrees so let's go ahead and align to this pipe my connector and since this pipe is at 10 feet of elevation let's take this one and also put it at 10 feet of elevation and now we should be able to connect it but before connecting it I want to assign some fixture units to it so let's go to edit type and right now hot water fixture is set to one let me just do 10 so it's a, an easier actually let's do a hundred which is the one that we were using initially okay I'm gonna click OK and I'm gonna connect now I connected my system you can tell that it connected because it turned red now if I click on this pipe this pipe is reading a hundred fixture units and then if I go to my let me since the pipes were underground I have to check I have to change the view range to let's say minus four feet and then minus four feet and now we can see them so now let's go to our 3d view and this pipe here is reading a hundred fixture units let me disconnect this just in case now if I connect this and then connect this and then connect this 
so this pipe is putting out 100 fixture units this one here is putting in 75 fixture units and this one here is putting in 25 fixture units and that's how you do it and obviously the correct way of doing this would have been to take this and not put it at zero offset but put it at a certain logical offset you know let's say four feet right so something like that and that way you don't have pipes under the slab i just did it to show you how the connections work and if you're enjoying this content there are many ways you can support it you can like or leave a nice comment down there it really helps me out you can subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any new videos you can join our patreon community in the link you see on the screen which is also in the description you can spread the word around, share it with your co-workers and in social media. And if you know any MEP firms that need help with BIM migration or any other topics, you can let them know so that I can help them.